you are almost like you are in a collision. But it had happened because of a series of things that probably haven't happened over a course of time. And so that's how discouragement comes. It comes because things just did not happen the way you have anticipated. Do I got anybody in here that, you know, you just kind of thought life was going to kind of turn just a little bit different? You thought that you wouldn't necessarily have to go around the curve that you went through or, you know, that you wouldn't have to deal with the person that you got to deal with or, you know, either maybe that you didn't even, you know, you, you didn't expect to have the job that you have, that you thought that all these years you have been planning for your life to go one particular way, but all of a sudden you are faced with life the way it is, <laughs> with the mishaps, with the shortcomings, you find yourself facing this thing called life. And you look and you say, God, how did I get here? <laughs> because I didn't plan for my life to go this way. <laughs> I have actually, you know, you know, planned it out. I put it on paper. I had my goals and my objectives in life. And so I never thought that my life would turn out this way, but despite it all, I'm here. Look at your neighbor and say, despite it all, you are here. The people of Israel, turn your Bibles over to Numbers 21.4. I just want to read one scripture. The people of Israel were headed toward the promised land, but they became very discouraged on the way. Psalms 21.4. And it says, then they journeyed from Mount Ur by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. It's interesting that you can be going the right way, the God way, and still become discouraged. <laughs> What's interesting is God was leading them, so it's not like they was actually lost. God was leading them. They wasn't lost. Yet, since they were so easily discouraged, they felt lost. How many of you know that you're going the right way, but because you are discouraged, you feel lost. You know that you're doing what God told you to do. You, I mean, you know that you're, you know, you're, you, you know, you're lining up your life according to what he would have for you. But still, discouragement has come. And when discouragement comes, you have a sense of feeling lost even though you know that you're doing the right thing and you're headed in the right direction, but somehow you still feel lost. Little by little, they begin to wear down, and they were good people who love the Lord. They have seen great victories in the past, but deep down they knew they was headed toward the promised land, but over time they lost their passion for life. And finally, they said, forget it, let's go back to Egypt. It will not work. How many have ever said, forget it, this ain't working, I'm getting ready to go back? <laughs> Do I got anybody in here that would tell the truth just a little bit today? <laughs> this ain't working, I'm going back to Egypt. I'm going back to the place that I've been delivered from because at least that was familiar to me. And God, you telling me to follow you blind. I've never seen, I've never seen this place that you're taking me to, but you're saying, God, follow me anyway. It's easier for me just to turn back around and go to my familiar place because that's what I'm accustomed to. Even though I was tied up, even though I was in bondage, but still that was familiar with me. And because of that, it created a comfortability within me, even though, how many of you know that you can be comfortable but still be in turmoil? <laughs> you can still be comfortable but yet still be in turmoil. And so this is what the people was feeling. They were feeling, I know God got something better for me. I know that he's leading me to the promised land, but it is so difficult out here. It is so discouraging because things like when I get to, you know, make it a few steps and a few progress, all of a sudden it seems like I'm back, back where I started again. I make one steps and I got two steps backwards. 
And it seems like my life has begun to just be this roller coaster. You know, sometime I'm up, sometime I'm down. It's just kind of just a feel, just kind of depends on how I feel that particular day. Nothing may not necessarily go wrong. I just may wake up feeling a certain way. It's just kind of the way the balls roll that particular day. <laughs> how I wake up. And so they begin to be discouraged and they say, we just going to go back. So what happened? They didn't pass the discouragement test. Now let's talk about you. No matter how successful you are or how many victories you've had in the past, sooner or later there will be opportunities to give up your happiness and become discouraged. When that discouraged spirit comes knocking on the door, let me tell you, you don't have to answer. When the, disturbing, when the discouraging spirit come knocking on your door, you ain't got to answer it. Have you ever had any people come to your door and you decided not to answer the door? You just kind of looked and, you know, kind of looked at the pee hole or, you know, went over to the curtain, you know, and kind of pulled the curtain back a little bit or pulled the blind back and, you know, and, and you figured out that, you know, they ain't nothing, they don't want nothing, they ain't even answering the door. You chose who you was going to allow to open to. You chose who you was going to let in your house. The power is in your hand. It's not in the intruder's hand or the visitor's hand. It is in your hand. You are behind the door. You don't have to open the door because you're the one that has the power to open the door and to release them into the house. And the same way it is with discouragement, you don't have to let that joker in. All you got to do is say, no thanks, you ain't visiting me today. I am not allowing intruders in today, no thanks. Look at your neighbor and just say, no thanks. Look at somebody else and just say, no thanks. There will be opposition on the way to your destiny. Turn your Bibles over to Galatians, Galatians uh, 6, 9. Because you got to realize I've come too far to stop now. I have come too far to stop now. Sometimes you got to look at the devil in his eye and say, Mr. Devil, I've come too far to stop now. Sometimes you got to look at self and say, self, you come too far to stop now. Sometimes you got to look at self-sabotage and say, I've come too far to stop now. Sometimes you got to look at opposition and say, opposition, I've come too far to stop now. You got to get back. No thanks. You can't come in today. So Galatians, Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So just like the children of Israel, you are right next door to your promised land. Your due season is right around the corner. That breakthrough, that dream is coming to pass. Meeting the right person, that overcoming obstacle is getting ready to fall down. God has already put it on his schedule. It's the time to stay in faith. It's not the time to lose heart. God has it on his schedule. Psalms 24 and 9 says, lift up your heads and the king of glory shall come in. Lift up your heads and the king of glory shall come in. In other words, I've got to stop looking down, but I've got to start looking up. Who is the redeemer of my soul? The Bible says, look up and the king of glory shall come in. I don't need to look down any longer. I don't need to look to the ground any longer. All I need to do is look up. My help is up, is not down. And the king of glory, it shall come in. And then Psalms 3 says, you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Sometimes circumstances may convince you to keep your head down. I found out that the word glory means here favor. 
And so the enemy tries to weigh you down with heavy burdens and convince you to stay focused on your difficulties. And before long, that discourage is like a heavy weight that you are dragging around. But if you will allow God to be the glory and the lifter of your head and work with him to shake off that discouragement, the only thing that will weigh on you is the favor of God. So instead of being heavy with discouragement and depression and burdens, you'll be heavy with joy. You'll be heavy with favor. You'll be heavy with blessing. You'll be heavy with victory, the lifter of your head. And then Psalms 41, 3 says, God brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock. He put a new song in my mouth. If you put your trust in him, you'll shake off discouragement. He says, I'll lift you to places that you could never reach on your own. I will lift you to places that you could not reach on your own. I will lift you out of trouble into victory. I will lift you out of sickness into health. I will lift you out of lack into abundance. And then I'm reminded of Psalms 35. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, morning starts at 12.01. But what's interesting is, even though it's a new morning, at midnight, it's still dark. So at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock, it's still dark. But yet, it's really the morning hours. It just still looks dark outside. But the season and the time has changed. And so that's why you can't be so caught up even like it feels like you're still in darkness. When God has a new season for you, it is your new season. I don't care how dark it looks on the outside. When God has changed a season in your life, in the time in your life, it has changed. It still looks dark. But morning is beginning to come. A dawning of a new day is beginning to surface. The sunshine is beginning to rise from the horizon. And I'm able to see glimpses on the other side. So as dark as it remains, the light is still coming. You're entered a new day. Now, usually between six and seven, you see the sun break forth over the horizon. <laughs> I want to tell you today that things are getting ready to break forth over your horizon. Things is beginning to brighten up. In other words, businesses will increase. Health will be restored. Dreams will come to pass. In those discouraging seasons, you've got to remind yourself that the one who lifts your head, the Most High God, has promised that joy is coming. So just because it's dark doesn't mean that joy is not on its way. It's just a matter of time before you see the sun break forth. Look at your neighbor and say, the sun is breaking forth. It may look dark. It may be blink. You know, you may feel blink and, you know, darkness may be all around you, but light is beginning to surface. I thought about a man in the Bible that hit a setback. He was one of the many six people at the pool of Bethesda. And that's over in John 5, 1 through 15. He had been sick for 38 years. 38 years. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a long time to be sick. And when Jesus saw him, he realized that he had been ill for a long time and asked him, would you like to get well? And the man said he couldn't get well because there was no one to pull him into the healing pool, waters of the pool, and he was too weak, weak to make his own way. But Jesus said, he said, I need you to stand up. I need you to pick up your Mac, and I need you to walk. 
Stand means that you got to be prepared for the conflict. And you got to hold your ground. In him we stand so we do not fight for victory. We fight from a place of victory. I'm not fighting for victory because victory has already been given to me. But I'm fighting from a place of victory. That takes the fight out of the whole thing. Because I know that I win already. I am not fighting from a defeated place. I am fighting from a winning place. I'm not fighting from a place of defeat. I'm fighting from a place of victory. And that changed the whole game. <laughs> that right there takes, changes the whole game. Because I know when I fight from a place of victory, the battle is already won. So I ain't got to be tripped up. I ain't got to be discouraged. You know, I ain't got to faint because I know that I'm fighting from a position that God has given me victory in. So I ain't weak, I ain't tired, I ain't timid, I ain't afraid, I ain't trying to give up because I know that my position in which I'm fighting is, is a victorious position. I'm fighting from a place of victory. Look at your neighbor and say, where are you fighting from? Look at somebody else and say, where are you fighting from? So he had to learn how to stand. And I'm sure it, 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 as he began to stand, I, I'm sure that he must have felt really weak and very afraid. And I'm sure his legs almost kind of felt like they want to give out from time to time because he had been sitting a long time. Now, this is a man 38 years that was waiting for somebody else to put him in the pool that he can receive his healing. He was discouraged. There was nobody to put him in because he couldn't get there because everybody else beat him to the pool. It was the first person that got into the pool is the one that received their healing. And so there he was, 38 years, waiting for somebody to feel sorry for him just to pick him up and put him in the pool. And God said, ain't nobody here that's getting ready to rescue you. Ain't nobody getting ready to pick you up and put you in the pool. Stand up. Stand up on your own. Use your hip bones. Use your thigh bones. Use those calves and stand up. When you stand up, there is muscles that are working versus when you're sitting. When you're sitting, you're just sitting. Ain't nothing really working necessarily but your backbones holding you up, your posture. But when you have to make a decision to stand, you got to put your feet flat down on the ground. And you got to, all right, I'm getting ready to get up from here. My feet is flat on the ground. I'm going to use every muscle of my leg to help pull me up. Every bone Every muscle, every joint I got that God gave me, I'm going to use that to help pull myself up. And so what he did was he took a step. But I'm sure he must have had some warfare in his mind even before he even contemplated on standing up. And he sat there for a minute, I'm sure, kind of looked around at everybody. And was wondering, now, and once if I, now wonder if I try this, am I going to be embarrassed? Are people going to laugh at me if I try to get up from the position that I'm in, knowing that I've been here for 38 years and nothing ain't happened yet? But he bypassed the criticism, I'm sure, and the mockers, and the haters, and the critics. And he looked at them eye to eye. I'm sure he looked at him, eye to eye. 
But he made a decision. I ain't going to be intimidated by you. <laughs> ain't worried about you. I ain't giving you a second thought. Who are you anyway? What you think you got that ain't got? What make you think you all that? whip de doo So he looked at the naysayers, and he said, all right, y'all don't want to help me. I got to help myself. <laughs> the master is calling me to get up. So in, a minute, so in a minute, he decided, he said, you know what? I'm getting ready to get up. And the man began to raise up. I'm sure he probably had to use a little help like I'm using right now. He probably had to kind of help himself up. <laughs> Sometime when you're in a position, you got to help yourself up. <laughs> because there's nobody to lift you up. You got to use whatever you got. You got to use a stick, whatever you got around. You got to use whatever you got. Your hands, whatever you got. You got to use whatever you got. One thing that I realize is that when God calls you to do something, he gave you something to do it with. You got something to do it with. <laughs> you got something inside of you to do it with. And so I'm sure he used whatever he could. And he made his way up. He may have got a little weak and kind of sat back down. But he determined if the master say I can get up, then I can get up. So he made his way up. And he used every fiber of his being. Because once he got up, he had to pull himself up. Because I'm sure he was so weak that he couldn't hardly pull himself up at first because he was so used to sitting in a seated position. So as soon as his muscles in his leg was able to cooperate, he was beginning, and he felt the solid ground, and he said, okay, this is solid. <laughs> the ground can hold me. He began to pull himself up. And so the Bible says that the Lord told him, he says, I need you to stand up. Then I need you to pick up your mat. <laughs> that which you have become comfortable with holding you for so many years. I don't need you to leave that there. I need you to pick that up. Because <laughs> God said, when I do something, I do the whole thing. <laughs> Not only am I going to pick you up, but I'm going to pick that up which has been holding you down. <laughs> that way you'll never have to return to that same place again. I'm going to remove it from you. So you're never going to get to a place where you can say, it's still there. I can go back. God said, no, pick that up too. And discard that. Discard it. Because I don't want you to use that as an excuse ever again to be comfortable and go back to the place where you was defeated. So I want to remove that as well. That way, if you even think about going back, <laughs> it ain't going to be there. If you even just contemplate on it, when you go back, it ain't going to even be there. Look at your neighbor say it ain't even there, so don't even think about it. So he told him to stand up, pick up your mat, and he says, and then walk. Now, walk is eight times in Ephesians, the word Walk. And it means literally to walk around, to deport oneself, and it also means to order one's behavior. So he says, I need you to stand up. He says, you're getting ready to fight from a place of victory. Pick up your Mac, and then I need you to walk. I want you to deport yourself. I want you to transport yourself from one location to the other. 
I want you to order your behavior. Now, the man had, a, had to make a decision right then and there. Could he do what he had never done before, or could he step out and do something that he's never done before? Could he use the excuse that I've never done this before, so how possibly can I do it? But no, he passed the test of excuses. And he said, even though I feel discouraged, I am not going to allow this, what I feel, keep me here. And so it is in your own individual life. Even though I may feel discouraged from time to time, I'm not going to allow what I feel keep me here any longer. I'm getting ready to stand up. And I'm getting ready to take the thing that has once destroyed me and throw it away. And then I'm getting ready to walk. Do I got anybody in here that is ready to walk to some places and to walk in some things that you never walked in before? Do I got anybody in here that got any strength in their body at all? that will muster up the strength with every fiber of your being, with every joint that you got, and stand up and walk in some places and open up some doors and, you know, bust loose some doors and tear down some chains. Do I got anybody in here? Do I got any takers in here? that has made up your mind on today that I'm getting ready to get up I don't need nobody to prophesy me up. I don't need nobody to pray me up. I don't need nobody, you know, to, you know, you know, just to tell me how wonderful I am or pat me on the back. I'm going to get up out of here. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you got to get up. You got to get up. Life may have weakened and discouraged you over time, but God is saying to you what he said to this man. If you want to be healed, stand up and stretch into a new way of thinking. Remember the word walk means to order one's behavior. When you can order your behavior, you can order your mind. He says stretch into a new way of thinking. Because where you are is not where God wants you to stay. How many got any grass in front of their yard and y'all done seen some grass? Certain seasons of the year, the grass look dead. But it's just because the grass is not in season. I rode down the neighborhood and looked at folks' grass and, and you know, and just kind of like, what's up with the grass? Why is the grass dead? Well, it's wintertime, and normally the grass is not green and clush, plush in the wintertime because the grass goes through seasons, various seasons. But usually when the spring comes, the grass comes up and it's green. But looking at the grass, the grass looked like it'll never live again. <laughs> it looks like it will never, ever live again. And sometimes you can even water that grass and it still looks dead. But it's in its season. That's the way it is in your life. Sometimes your dreams appear to be dead or dying. But you have to realize they are not really dead. They are just not in season. They're coming back. New seasons of growth are coming, new health, new relationships, new opportunities. Just because something looks dead, it's not time to write it off. My dream may look dead, but I ain't going to write it off. What I anticipated on happening don't look like it's going to happen. It looks 
dead, but I'm not going to write it off. Just because I feel discouraged and I feel like my hopes and my ambitions will never take place, it's not time to write it off. This is just a season. This season shall pass. Just wait a little bit longer. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Just wait a little bit longer. This is only temporary. This is only a season that I'm going through. This season is getting ready to come to an end. I prophesy to you today that some of you are in a season, but it's getting ready to come to an end. I prophesy to a few others, and I say just wait a little bit longer. Just wait a little bit longer. Your season is right around the corner. It's right in view. You just can't see it because everything looks so dark. And because of the darkness, it has blinded what's really there. It's almost like if we cut off all the lights here and there was no light, you may not be able to see a whole lot of things, but everything is still in place. You just can't see it because the light is off. But it ain't moved no position. This table is still going to be here if I turn off the light. And just because you can't see it, and just because you're walking up to it, and you're feeling around for it, and you say, it ain't fair, it ain't fair, somebody must have took it, because I can't feel it, and I can't see it, but it ain't going nowhere still there. All you got to do is just walk a little bit more. That's all you got to do is walk a little bit more. And you feel around a little bit more, and you say, it's still not fair. I can't see the table. Who took the table? I know the table was in this spot. But you'll walk up a little bit more. But then you just can't walk. You got to reach. <laughs> you got to reach for it. You got to kick it or at least reach for it with your hand. And once you identify it, you say, it's still here. It was dark, but it's still here. I couldn't see it, but it's still here. I couldn't touch it, but it's still here. And so the enemy will try to cause you to be notified in your faith and be at a place where you feel like you're paralyzed that you can't go on. And you stand in that defeated place. You stay in that weary place. But God said, just walk a little bit further. Even though it's dark, it's still there. I'm telling you today, and I prophesy to you today, you just need to walk a little bit further. It's still there. Even though it's dark and you cannot see it, it is still there. The prophecy is still there. The promise is still there. Everything that God has promised you, it is still in place. And all he's doing is waiting for you to get in place. But the promise is still in place. Ain't nothing changed. It's still there. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the promise is still there. The dream is still there. The gift is still there. It is still there. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise like you really, really believe it. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise like you know that the promise is still there. Come on, put your hands together. Because it is. 